Hello, investors. My name is Edwin Epperson, manager of Blue Bay Capital, and I am helping capital investors like yourself make wiser, more informed decisions. Today, we're going to be discussing private lending basics and what does the process look like? So as Lewis Carroll has famously said, if you don't know where you are going, any road will get you there. And we don't want to put you on any road. We want to give you a clear path in how to do a private loan. So one of the things that we're going to discuss is key private lender players. These are all the players in a, in a private loan uh, that you should be aware of. We will discuss key private lender documents. Each one of those players or roles that play a role in the private loan origination, they should be providing you as the lender specific documents. So we will review those. We are then going to go from hello to close. Hello meaning marketing all the way through to actually closing a loan and what that entails. Last but not least, we'll cover how Blue Bay Capital's turnkey solution can help you as a passive investor generate passive income through private lending. Let's discuss the private lender parties or the roles that are often associated with a loan. First, we have the lender and the borrower. Sometimes there may be a broker who brings the borrower to the lender. So you may have relationships with either of these roles, but at the end of the day, it's the borrower who is signing your loan documents and whom you will give your money to, not the broker. Now, there are certain roles that are unique to the borrower's relationship and others that are unique to the lender's relationship. And then we have crossover, where certain roles are used by both the borrower and lender, yet they protect only one of the parties. So let's discuss the borrower parties. Obviously, we have the broker, which has a relationship with the borrower. Now, what needs to be clear here is the fact that the broker is not a truly neutral party, nor do they have the best interest of you as a lender in mind. They are a transactional party, meaning they only put food on their table if the deal closes, which is the same position as the borrower is coming from. If there's a wholesaler, which may or may not be involved in the deal, uh, they will be the original party under contract with the seller and they are assigning their note or assigning their contract to your borrower. Their interest is also to just close the deal. They do not care that you as a lender may need more time to evaluate the deal or that uh, the deal may not even make sense. And quite frankly, the wholesaler is not really going to be part of your underwriting or processing, though you should be aware of what they got the property under contract for. The real estate agent, again, they are only getting paid if the deal closes, so they are approaching this from one position. Just like the uh, the broker and the borrower, this deal has to close. Of course, the general contractor who will be performing the work on the project, uh, they will also be involved. Uh, of all parties in relationship with the borrower, this is one of those parties that does not care if the deal closes and therefore will not be looking to you as the, at the, as the lender to let's get this deal closed. They only care if the agreement to do the work by the borrower is signed. Uh, and of course, the borrower will not sign if they don't close on the loan. So uh, the, the general contractor is hired by the borrower and they are working for the borrower. However, uh, there's no pressure from the contractor to close that deal. Now let's discuss the lender's parties. The first party, this is solely looking out for your interest uh, as the lender is the attorney. They will review documents uh, from title, review the borrower entity and craft legal documents signed by the borrower. This shifts as much risk from you as the lender to the borrower, which is what we want. The second party that is strictly looking out for your interest as a lender is the servicer, basically responsible for collecting interest payments, uh, managing that loan all the way until it's reconveyed. And they are somebody that is working for you. They're looking out for your interest. They can also take over getting everything lined up in the case of a foreclosure. They are a key player to have to ensure that you stay as passive as possible. Now let's discuss both parties. The both parties, uh, these are roles that I would call neutral parties. But at the end of the day, all three of these parties provide a service either to you or the borrower. And they're really looking out for only one or, or both of those. Title typically is identified by the seller and initially contacted by the borrower, but they are providing a valuable service to you as a lender, the closing protection letter and lender's title insurance. These two items are strictly for your benefit and the borrower pays for it. The appraiser is your contact that you identify and that you hire, but the borrower pays for. 
They are looking out for your interest as the lender, and they are providing an accurate estimation of property value. Now, the inspector is going to reveal to you what is wrong with the property so that you can decide if the general contractor's scope of work, their budget can actually cover the entire needed repairs for the project. Both the appraiser and the inspector are looking out for your interest as a lender, even though they will have some interaction with the borrower. For all contacts with green arrows that you're looking at, these are rows, roles that you should identify and hire and retain. Um, blue, uh, they're typically, the appraiser uh, is typically somebody that you will hire and retain. However, never ever use the borrower's recommended contacts that should be looking out for your interest, meaning the attorney and the servicer um, and the appraiser, honestly. The title and inspector, you know, the borrower may hire those, uh, but they should be working for your benefit. Let's talk about the key private lender documents. Now, these are documents that will be presented by the roles that we just discussed. To begin with, you've got your borrower or and or your broker. They will be providing you the loan app as well as a purchase contract, an executed purchase contract between the borrower and the seller. Second, we have our general contractor. They will pro be providing several documents, but one of the more important documents is your construction budget. This allows you to adequately understand what's being done to the property and so that your appraiser can make an accurate estimation of value when the property is complete. The appraiser, the appraiser of course is going to provide you an appraisal and that should provide you an as is value as well as a future or ARV after repair value. The next uh, role that we'll discuss is title. Now title will provide two, these two documents, a title commitment and a closing protection letter. These are for your protection as a lender the title commitment is simply a commitment to provide title insurance. The title insurance is not issued until the day of closing or, or thereafter. The closing protection letter basically lays out what the title company uh, is responsible for and what errors that they will cover uh, in the case of something not being caught on title. Last but not least, we're going to cover the attorney. Now the attorney provides what we call a loan binder or loan documents. These four documents are the most common, especially in fix and flip and or construction. Uh, you've got your mortgage or deed of trust and that's state dependent. It depends if the state is a judicial state or a non-judicial state. This will determine which one of those documents your attorney drafts. You've also got your note, also called the promissory note. You've got your guarantee, also called the personal guarantee. And then you've got your construction agreement. Now, the one document that may not be in all your loans would be the construction agreement. The construction agreement really is specific to either a renovation or a new construction project. Again, all of those together are called your loan binder or your loan documents, and your attorney will create those for you. Let's discuss from hello to close. So we're going to cover the four stages of getting a file uh, and then getting it to closing. We're gonna discuss marketing. Uh, that slide will be indicative of a yellow dot, meaning, or an orange dot, the beginning of the process. Step two will be your process or processing of a loan file. And we'll cover what that means and what you should be looking for. Underwriting, step three, is how you vet that information that is being collected during processing. And then of course, last but not least, closing, that is the target, that is the goal, is to get this loan to close. Let's discuss marketing. As a private lender, making loans is how you stay in business. If investors don't know what you do, then how will they know to come to you for capital? So saying hello is part of marketing. As previously mentioned, there are two roles that you can market to. Number one, you can market directly with the borrower through one-on-one -on -one marketing, real estate clubs, meetups, events, social media, this is where you are trying to identify and vet potential borrowers yourself. This can include a lot of phone calls and man hours. However, it is the most effective form of finding well-qualified borrowers. The second way is to identify brokers who already have clients and connect with them. The primary role of a broker is to simply find borrowers. By connecting with a well-established broker, you can ensure that loan opportunities are frequent and consistent. There are advantages and disadvantages to both, but as far as profit to you as the lender, 
Just know that working through a broker, you will not be able to charge as many upfront points as you could by marketing directly with the a borrower. The broker will keep a point or two for themselves. However, if you have a lot of capital to lend, working with brokers can help you keep more of your capital deployed rather than sitting on it, waiting for a deal to come directly through uh, a borrower directly. Step two is a process. You can either process a loan yourself or you can have your broker do it. Regardless, this is the 30,000 foot view of what goes into this process of processing a loan file. There are three categories. We're gonna cover the borrower, the property, and the project. In each one of these, these are questions that you'll want to, or uh, I guess facts that you'll want to dive into. So the borrower, you wanna know who the borrower is. You're going to want to know what their experience is. How many projects have they done of like kind? You'll wanna know how much they are contributing to the property, specifically uh, capital. You'll also want to know their ability to repay. Now that ability to repay is really specific to if the borrower plans on holding that property for a long-term rental or even a short-term rental, and their plan is to refinance your loan out after a set period of time. That's really where you're going to want to dive into the borrower's ability to repay or ability to qualify for a loan to take you out. But if they're simply fixing the property up to sell on the open market, that is your exit strategy. That is their ability to repay. Next category we'll talk about is the property. You're gonna to wanna to know where the property is located at. You're gonna to want to know what the as-is value as well as the future value of that property. You'll want to know everything on chain of title, meaning any encumbrances, any liens, uh, any cloud of title that could prevent you from being in the lien position that you plan on being on, being in when the loan closes. You'll also want to make sure that the borrower has an arm's length transaction from the property. And what I mean is that the borrower does not have any interest or ownership in other entities that are currently on the current chain of title for the property. You want to make sure that this is a third party transaction, unless, of course, the borrower is simply doing a refinance. Project. This is some uh, three primary questions you're going to want to ask. Is the it, is it project feasible? Is it capable? And is it reasonable? Uh, feasible meaning, uh, can the work being performed on the property, can it get done? Capability, is the borrower and more specifically their contract team able to actually do the work that is being proposed? And reasonable, does the project make sense for the location that it's in? For instance, if a borrower is uh, going to put a million dollar property in a neighborhood where the average price is 150000 that's not really reasonable unless, of course, it is a unique scenario, such as um, maybe it's a beach town and the property that the borrower is renovating or building is on the water. And behind that, you know, uh, maybe a few blocks from the water properties are not actually they're not selling for that much. That would be, you know, a unique situation. But for the most part, you want to make sure that your property is reasonable and the project is reasonable for the area. Next, we're gonna dive into some of the documents that you'll want to review during processing for each one of these categories. So first, the borrower. You're gonna to wanna to get their driver's license, entity documentation, bank statements, credit reports, background checks, and prior HUD ones. If they say they've got a lot of experience, this is an excellent way to vet that. And of course, their team. For the property, you're gonna to wanna to see the purchase agreement. <laughs> Does, has the seller and the borrower actually agreed on a purchase price and have they both signed that purchase agreement? You're going to want to see a BPO or a CMA, which is a broker's price opinion or a comparable market analysis. This isn't a requirement. Uh, the appraisal, which is next, uh, that, that appraisal actually will give you what the accurate valuations of the property are. Also, you're going to want to look at the tax bill, uh, the title report. Both of those are provided to you by the title company. You're going to want to make sure that the property has insurance that the borrower is paying for and that insurance meets your requirements to, again, reduce and mitigate risk. And then, of course, inspections. For the project, the documents that you'll want to review or receive in review are your construction budget and your contractor's agreement. Now, the construction budget is what we call a line item a budget. It lays out exactly the cost of labor and material for all the work being done on the project. The contractor agreement, also commonly referred to as the scope of work or the SOW, that is a written story, if you will, of what the contractor will do to the property. 
uh, as well as the scope of work should definitely include how change orders are handled. So you'll want to make sure that that is in there. Both your borrower and your contractor or the borrower's contractor should sign that scope of work or contractor agreement. Contractor documents include license, uh, workman's comp, and general liability insurance. Draw schedule. The draw schedule is a one-page or a two-page document drafted between you and the borrower that simply states, uh, you know, this is the total amount of the project and you're going to be dispersing draws or portions of that construction funding to the borrower on specific dates. The feasibility study. Uh, now, if you're getting a feasibility study, this takes place of the inspections. The feasibility study will actually answer uh, those three primary questions that we wanted to answer. Is the project capable? Is it feasible? And is it reasonable? So that's what a feasibility study will do for you. Uh, plans and permits, if this is not a new construction, if it's a renovation, the plans and permits may not be pulled before the work starts, obviously because the, the borrower wants to know that they're closing on the loan. However, on new construction projects, uh, it is highly advised that you get those before you do your loan. Now we're moving into underwriting. So you'll notice that in the underwriting, uh, we have the underwriting uh, going on at the same time that processing is hap happening. And this is because as you're getting the documents uh, for each one of those three categories, borrower, property, and project, you're able to start reviewing those as you receive them. Here's some questions that you'll want to ask during underwriting, and this helps you determine if this loan is a safe loan for you. Is all the information being presented, is it true and accurate? Does it make sense? Does this project make sense? Uh, does everything about the loan request make sense? Are all known risk mitigated, meaning are all known risk to you as a lender, are they reduced? A follow-up is, are all unmitigated risk assumed by the borrower? At the end of the day, it's all about shifting risk to the borrower. And then again, uh, just to top it off, how can you shift more risk to the borrower? And this is one of the reasons I love private lending. It is really about that. And this is what it boils down to. You're making an investment, and this is one of the few investments to where you can actually control, reduce your risk, and then shift the responsibility of those risks to someone else. At the end of the day, you want to investigate, investigate, investigate. This is diving into the documents presented and making sure that all the information is there and that it, again, makes sense. After you've underwritten, you are ready to close. So we're going into we're going to move into step four, which is the closing. Now, closing is handled by title. There, the title company contributes a function, or they control a function of closing, and that is the function of escrow. So sometimes you'll say you'll hear people talk about title and escrow. Uh, sometimes you'll just hear people talk about title um, performing the role of escrow. Escrow is simply a function of closing. And what does that look like? Well, we have our Final players for closing, and this includes the seller, the lender, your attorney, and your borrower. So the seller has the deed to the property. They have current ownership of the property. You have the loan amount. You've got the money to make the loan. And then your attorney has what we call the loan documents or the loan binder. We went over that earlier. And then, of course, your borrower is bringing the down payment to make up for the remainder amount of your purchase and paying for all other costs and fees associated with the loan. Now, escrow is opened. Your borrower, your attorney, and your seller all send their documents into title. And then you are the last to wire in your funds for the loan. The day of closing comes, the borrower signs the documents, and then the only players at this point are the following. Your seller receives whatever they agreed to sell the property for. You received signed loan documentation and your borrower receives deed to the property typically in the form of a warranty deed if it's a, obviously if it's a purchase, if it's a refinance, uh, actually the seller is completely out of the picture in a refinance. And that's it. You now would have a performing loan on day one. So how does Blue Bay Capital's turnkey solution really provide answers? Uh, if you're not really clear about understanding the industry of private lending, uh, then we can provide answers for you on that. If you don't have the experience of becoming a private lender or making loans, we can answer that for you. If you're looking for true file cabinet money and you're not looking to actually do any work, you want as passive investment as possible. If you're looking for true leverage, 
uh, a way to not only leverage capital, but also leverage other people's time, knowledge, and experience. Blue Bay Capital can help you with that. Most importantly, if you're looking for a way to diversify your investments across many different loans and be able to participate with other sophisticated investors, we can provide a solution for that. Really, at the end of the day, the question is, is turnkey private lending for you? Uh, my belief that if any of these are, are in line with where you're coming from, then our turnkey private lending solution is for you. If you're looking for low risk, yet higher returns and safer investments, if you're looking for investments where you are in control, and if you're looking for truly passive investments that generate passive income, I believe that our turnkey private lending solution is for you. My name is Edwin Epperson. Thank you so much for watching this brief video today. This is my contact information. Please reach out either on LinkedIn or Facebook. Would love to have a conversation with you. Any questions that you have about private lending and becoming a private lender yourself. God bless. Make a great rest of your week.